welcome to this particular module and uh, here we will understand a very important step uh, that is used in fabricating lot of devices all right so what is that particular step or process that process is called photolithography now until now what we have seen is uh, how can we uh, select a substrate and if we select silicon as a substrate then uh, uh, how can we grow oxide and once we grow oxide then how can we deposit metal or insulator or semiconductor. Now if I want to pattern, pattern this semiconductor or insulator or metal I have to understand what is photolithography. Now your question should be that where I will use photolithography. So, when you when you design a MOSFET you have to design source and drain right. So, you have to diffuse the n type dopant or p type dopant only in the area where you want to have your source and drain. Then you have to grow oxide only below the gate that is a thin gate oxide right. Then finally, you have metals so you have to deposit the metal and pattern these metals. So, require creating a window for diffusion, creating a thin layer of oxide and patterning it, creating a polysilicon gate or a metal gate and creating a contact pads with metal this all requires photolithography all right. So, uh, uh, if you understand photolithography then you can understand lot of steps lot of devices not only MOSFET, but also the whole circuit design and also lot of other engineering devices this which can be sensors which can be actuators these are all micro engineer devices all right. So, let us understand in this particular module what is photolithography. So, if you come on the screen this will be our class 7 and when I talk about photolithography right uh, the, the the word itself has three different uh, subgroup photo or three different words photo litho and graphy all right. So, this lithograph is again we have seen in the class 1 that it comes from a word lithos lies and graphic that means that we are carving we are carving a single stone or we are carving a stone right it is a monolithic single stone, but litho is carving graphic ok. So, using photons so photolithography right now nothing but purpose of photolithography is to create small structures or features small structures or features on a sing on a silicon wafer using photoresist. So, we should understand what is photoresist right features made out of photoresist by etching u with uv light. So, understand how we can expose the wafer with uv light how we can expose the wafer with uv light. So, two things we understand is one is you can create you can create small structures second is you have to use photoresist third is you have to expose or etch this photoresist with the help of UV light you have to pattern this photoresist with the help of UV light three things we understand ok. So, what are the steps in photolithography right what are the steps in photolithography the first step is the first step is you have to clean your wafer that is the first step always when we start uh, fabricating a device the first step is you have to clean your wafer second is you have to coat the wafer coat the wafer with what photoresist coat the wafer with what photoresist that is called photoresist coating photoresist coating all right. So, for photoresist coating what are the steps first step is you have to pre bake 
and primer coating pre bake and primer coating all right that means you have to coat the photo resist uh, uh, so before photo resist the primer coating is sometimes you will see a word called h m d s h m d s this is your primer all right so uh, for for improving the addition of uh, photo resist onto the uh, onto the oxidized silicon substrate or onto the metal over the oxidized silicon substrate sometimes we use a primer called hmds all right so first step is your pre bake and primer coating second is photo resist spinning photo resist spinning so this is first step this is second step third step is soft bake soft bake now you should know this things we have already discussed right furnace spin coating after spin coating you have to do soft bake soft bake or pre bake remember this word pre bake the pre bake was done at 90 degree centigrade right pre bake was done at 90 degree centigrade for 1 minute using hot plate using hot plate this we have discussed when we were looking at the fabrication of interdigitator electrodes in su812 remember this word pre bake right pre bake pre bake is also called soft bake pre bake is also called soft bake all right so first is your first thing is you have to pre bake the wafer pre bake the wafer because you have cleaned the wafer using uh, chemicals and then finally you rinse the wafer using di deionized water and that's why you have to dry the wafer you have to uh, dehydrate the wafer that you can do with pre baking and then you have to do primer coating so then uh, from now we will use uh, to distinguish the pre baking uh, uh, that is pre baking is used for removing any uh, uh, water content right on any, any any moisture content pre baking will be we will use and we will use soft bake when it comes to photo resist so it is easy for us to identify or delineate between two all right so we will use soft bake when it comes to photo resist we use pre bake whenever it comes to removing the moisture from the surface of the wafer okay now so the step for pr coating would be first step pre bake and primer coating second step photo resist spin coating third step soft bake then you if you remember i have shown you masks masks what are type of mask bright field mask and dark field mask bright field mask and dark field mask using the mask we have to align the wafer and expose the wafer right expose the wafer which is already spin coated with photo resist and has been soft baked and has been soft baked that wafer we have to align it and we have to expose it aligning will be done using the mask mask are two types one is bright field second one is dark field right and then exposure is done using uv uv is your ultraviolet light easy so first thing is wafer cleaning second thing is primer coating before primer coating pre bake pre bake then primer coating i have a primer coating pr pr coating PR coating is photo resist coating after that you have to do soft bake soft bake is done at 90 degree centigrade for 1 minute if you keep the wafer on the hot plate if you keep the wafer inside the oven then the uh, time would be higher time would be higher ok so after soft bake is done you have to expose the wafer but you can do exposure with the help of a mask and uv light you have to keep the mask on the wafer which is coated with the help of photo resist right that alignment alignment is done with the mask and then it is exposed using uv light we have seen this if you remember if you do not remember again look at the video where I have taught how to pattern interdigitated electrodes inside the SU812 or how to fabricate a gas sensor using microfabrication techniques and you will understand that how we are using the photo resist ok. So, 
I will also show you one time again in this particular lecture how we can use photoresist, how the exposure is done, how the alignment is done all right. Uh, so, we come back to the screen and what we see is the next step after alignment and exposure would be development, development of what development of photoresist, development of photoresist. So, next step would be next step would be so this is your fourth step, fifth step would be developing photoresist for developing photoresist for developing photoresist you have you have photoresist developer you have photoresist developer all right after you develop the photoresist you have to perform a process called hard bake right one is soft bake one is hard bake hard bake is carried out at you remember right 120 degree centigrade for 1 minute on hot plate 120 degree centigrade for 1 minute on hot plate. After hard baking you have to inspect the wafer, you have to inspect the wafer, we inspect the wafer for what whether the photoresist has been properly patterned or not, whether the photoresist has been properly patterned or not this is very important all right. So, for performing that for, for performing this hard bake uh, and to understand whether the photoresist is uh, properly patterned or not what we will do we will we will see what are the steps and what do you mean by wafer inspection what do you mean by wafer inspection ok. So, let us see on the screen if you see on the screen what do you see a blank screen. Now, let us take an example ok let us take an example whatever we have seen what we have seen we have seen the following steps we are seeing the following steps. So, what I want to show is what do you mean by pattern inspection and how can you inspect a pattern. So, let us see. So, let us let us assume like this that we want to we want to uh, pattern we want to pattern a metal with this particular shape and this shape is your meander shape ok, meander, meander shape. Like this all right. So, what you want to do you have want to have a pattern we of metal which will look on this when we look on the substrate it looks like this. So, wh what what is this material material is your photoresist material is your photoresist. So, I want to I want to see whether I can pattern this photoresist whether I can pattern this photoresist on the silicon substrate on the silicon substrate ok and whether it looks like this or not whether it looks like this and how can I obtain this pattern, how can I obtain this pattern that is another question right. So, we will obtain this pattern with the process that we have just now seen a uh, process called your lithography, process called your photolithography, photolithography because we are using UV light, we are using UV light right. So, let us see what is the first step, first step would be we take a we take a silicon wafer, once you take the silicon wafer then what you do you have to grow a you have to grow a oxide because this pattern we want on the oxidized silicon wafer we want this pattern on the oxidized silicon wafer all right guys it's very easy all right i want to see this pattern hmm i'll make a little bit thick and maybe one more layer my my pen is not working properly right that is why you see that there is lot of error amazing <laughs> anyway does not matter does not matter point is not to drop it correctly just ok. So, now I, I want this pattern all right. So, what will I do first I will you see on the screen first I will take a silicon wafer 
next I will grow a oxide, next I will grow a oxide. Now, all of you know how to grow oxide right, all of you know how to grow oxide using thermal oxidation, using thermal oxidation. So, I am growing SiO2, this is my silicon, this is my SiO2. Now, I want to have a pattern of photoresist which looks like this, which looks like this right. So, what will be next step? Next step would be I will, I will deposit or I will spin coat, I will spin coat the photoresist, I will spin coat the photoresist on the oxidized silicon substrate on the oxidized silicon substrate right that will be my third step. First step is I take a silicon wafer then of course, when I when I do not say that we are cleaning it we have to assume it we have cleaned it ok. You take the silicon wafer then you clean it then you clean it rinse it with a di then you pre bake it then you apply a primer then you uh, grow oxide, then you coat spin coat ok, spin coat photoresist alright. This process we have done that is why we have from here we have obtained which is wafer shown here alright. What is our next step? Next step is next step is if you remember right if you remember next step will be our soft bake right if you go back see we have done this we have done this now we have to do next which is soft bake so we will keep this wafer on a hot plate at 90 degrees centigrade for 1 minute and this is a positive photoresist okay that we will discuss we have discussed we will again discuss this is photoresist and is a positive photoresist. So, we will put this wafer on a hot plate, hot plate at 90 degree centigrade, at 90 degree centigrade for 1 minute alright. That is our, that is our soft bake. Now, what is the next step? Next step we require a mask, we require mask. So, we will have a mask that will have that will have a pattern that will have a pattern which we want which is shown here all right and just showing this uh, representative diagram so it it is looks similar to it okay it looks similar to it so don't say that there are four four uh, uh, square waves and i can only see three here that is not correct is a representative diagram Okay. So, you have a mask with this particular pattern with this particular pattern and we have discussed and we have discussed that this mask where the pattern is dark where the pattern is dark and the field is bright when the pattern is dark and the field is bright is called is called bright field mask right this is called see the field is bright this is all the area here is bright. So, it is a bright field mask right. Now, once have you once you have this mask once you have this mask what is the next step what is the next step next step is we will load this mask. So, uh, so, next step would be we will load this mask. So, I will draw the wafer once again then we have oxide then we have photoresist right and then we will we have done soft baking already we have completed soft baking so what is the next step next step is we have to load the mask load the mask where load the mask on this on this wafer that means i will load the mask i will load the mask which has pattern this is a cross section right 
you see this this mask ok. I am loading this mask let us say m 1 m 1 this is my photo resist this is my silicon dioxide this is silicon this is silicon dioxide and this is my cross section of the mask cross section of the mask right. So, if I take a cross section or side view of the mask shown on the bottom left of the screen then it will look something similar to what I am drawing here on the wafer. So, now I have loaded the mask now I, ha I have loaded the bright field mask on the on the oxidized silicon substrate. What is the next step you have to align it. So, I have aligned it next step you have to expose it expose using what you know expose using UV light expose using UV light what is UV ultraviolet light right. So, go let us go back. So, we have done pre bake premier coating yes I said ok let us consider the premier coating is done next is photo resist spin coating done soft bake done alignment and exposure done next is development development of what development of photo resist. So, for developing photo resist the first step would be the first step would be that you have to you have to take out the mask you have to unload the mask you have to unload. So, after this step the next step would be to unload the mask from the photo resist and and dip this wafer dip the above wafer in photo resist developer in photo resist developer. When you do that when you do that right now you understand ok very important we have used positive photo resist. So, whatever the pattern suppose this is the pattern then we will have or let us say let us put a symbol. So, it is easy let us say uh, this is the pattern z all right then if I use positive photo resist I will get z. Okay, same pattern that means whatever area whatever area is not exposed you see if I expose this right then the area which is z that area is not exposed the area which is not exposed that area becomes stronger the area which is exposed that becomes weaker. So, in this particular case the area which was not exposed the area under this pattern what was not exposed and what is the characteristic of positive photo resist the area which is not exposed gets stronger the area which is not exposed gets stronger. So, when I dip the above wafer in the photo resist developer what will happen this will happen what will happen this thing will happen you see here this is my photo resist this is my photo resist right. So, this thing will happen when I dip the above wafer this this particular wafer in the photo resist developer all right guys and then I have to see whether my photo resist is completely developed or not is perfectly developed or not that is called wafer inspection. So, if you go back I have done what I have done I have now aligned an exposure pre bake pre bake and primer coating photo resist spin coating we have done we have done soft bake then we have done alignment and exposure right then we have developed the photo resist developed the photo resist and then we have done hard bake we have done hard bake right. So, we have to I next topic next step is after developing the photo resist 
we have to put the photo uh, put the wafer at 120 degree for 1 minute on hot plate on hot plate right that is your that is your post bake that is your post bake or hard bake finally you have to inspect the wafer you have to inspect the pattern so what is a pattern pattern is this particular pattern in our case we will inspect once this is done this is what it means uh, when we are talking about when we are talking about photolithography steps which are shown right over here all right easy extremely easy i'll take an example another example so you get it okay so you have to understand when you have to develop or you have to pattern something these are the steps that you have to follow so after this let us see how the wafer is clean and how the pre bake is done how the wafer is clean and how the pre bake is done right so the wafer can be cleaned that is the silicon wafer can be cleaned by several techniques one is bubble jet one is bubble jet where you have to use nitrogen plus plus water right in a jet formation and you can use a bubbler so you can clean the wafer second is with high pressure you can rinse the wafer third is you can use a sonicator and clean the wafer sonicator is used at 1.5 megahertz and these are the cleaning techniques for silicon wafer these are the cleaning techniques for silicon wafer now there can be moisture on the wafer after you perform these steps right so how to remove or how to dehydrate dehydrate the wafer for that we have to do high temperature baking also also called pre baking to remove moisture after wafer cleaning process easy very easy next to improve the adhesion i have told you to improve the adhesion of photoresist on to the on to the oxidized on to the oxidized silicon or or any material on oxidized silicon you have to improve the addition of photoresist on any material that is deposited on the oxidized silicon or you want to improve the photoresist on oxidized silicon you have to first you have to first do the priming step that is done by hmds hmds and that is your hexamethyl disilinase disilizen silizen right disilizen so hexamethyl disilizen is used for improving the addition of photoresist on to the on to the substrate on to the substrate that means that if i want to code photoresist i will first code hmds and then i will code photoresist if i want to code photoresist on uh, metal which is deposited in oxidized silicon i will first code hmds on that i will code photoresist so photoresist so it goes like this okay oxidized silicon substrate is a first one second step is metal third step is hmds fourth step is photoresist in this case oxidized silicon substrate first hmds second photoresist third of course you want to add further step then a would be silicon here a would be silicon right easy and this is then you have to put it at 200 to 50 degrees centigrade for about 60 seconds for about 60 seconds there are various way of improving the uh, of uh, uh, adjusting or optimizing this temperature and time there are various techniques to improve the or uh, various ways to improve the opt or optimize the uh, time and the temperature but that is we are not discussing what we are discussing is that if you are given a wafer can you clean the wafer if yes after cleaning can you pre bake the wafer if yes after that can you coat hmds on the wafer to improve the photoresist adhesion then it say yes everything is yes we can do this yes we can do this yes we can do this right so this is your wafer cleaning and pre bake technique all right easy very easy correct so if i want, let us go to the next topic let us go to the next topic next topic would be photoresist 
So, what are the photoresists? All right, we will see the photoresist in the next module, and uh, uh, so that you have some break in between modules. Right now, what we have seen, we have seen how you can uh, clean the wafer and how you can do the lithography step. For performing the lithography step, we have seen certain uh, steps uh, right from uh, wafer cleaning, then you have to do pre baking and primer coating, then you have to do photoresist spin coating, then you have to do soft baking, then you have to align the mask, expose the wafer, then you have to do hard bake uh, developing, then you have to do hard baking, then you have to do pattern inspection, then you follow with a uh, example here, and then we have seen the wafer cleaning and the uh, priming and dry dehydration steps. Now, the next step would be the how what are the photoresist and what are the kind of photoresist and how can we use photoresist for fabricating a uh, or for using as a uh, for for uh, uh, for patterning several metals or materials onto the oxidized silicon substrate right that will be the next step. So, we I will see you in the next class until then you take uh, uh, you take uh, again a look on the things that we have discussed and uh, uh, let us continue the next class how the photoresist uh, or kind of photoresist are there and how we can pattern uh, how we can use for obtaining a pattern of our desire all right i'll see you in the next class till then you take care